Could it possibly be Terran music? Indeed it is. We're gonna watch a game of, I would say, maybe just my favorite Protoss player right now, Snow. In the bottom left corner. And we see Weekamady. <laughs> this was just lifted directly from the ladder. And let me uh, actually open up the diplomacy menu and show this a little bit. Um, so we're going to be doing a um, whole bunch of Brood War casting today and tomorrow. And we're going to be doing some StarCraft II stuff on Thursday. The following week, I'm going to be playing World of Warcraft. And in the future, going forward, I'm intending on doing some more regular StarCraft content. Oh, yes. God, Terran music is so good. This is in a wonderful celebration of Blizzard Month, where Bubba Kotick is no longer part of the company. Um, so this map is Neo Sylphid, which I think is a really rough map uh, as the Protoss against Terran. I don't know what the map statistics are on it, but I can explain why I don't like it. Because <laughs> I am the data. And let me actually just open up this and hide this selection panel for a moment. Wait, isn't this polypoid? No, polypoid is the, th or, or polypoid, excuse me. Wait, am I am I switching them? I thought polypoid was the three player map and sylphid was the four player map. Am I crazy? Neo sylphid is three player map? Wow. I don't believe any of you. All right, well, whatever. I'm gonna pause this. That's crazy. You know, here's the best part. When you're just an observer, you never even have to open up the map yourself. <sighs> Feels so good. So here's why I don't like this map if I were a Protoss player. I mean, usual sort of formation of the natural expansion, but this third is has these fat ramps leading up to a, this kind of weird looking high ground where the third base is. But then if you look around, there's lots of thin chokes, thin ramps in the middle of the map. It's really not even that big. So if you're the Terran player, you can push towards these areas, secure them, and do lots of massive containment. I still, I still feel like I'm having that Mandela effect where I'm like, I just believe that this is not Sylphid. Call it. War. I feel like I'm going crazy. Polypoid is a four-player map. Dude, that's insane. I've, I've called that three-player map Polypoid for as long as I've, I can remember. And, well, you know what? Allow me to correct you for a moment. It is not Polypoid. It's Polypoid. <laughs> and Chef! Oh my god, it's amazing to see you, Chef. Welcome to me talking about some Brood War. Chef, one of the greatest North American... StarCraft and StarCraft II players of all time has blessed us with his lovely presence. Good to see you, Chef. But yeah, anytime you have narrow alleys where siege tanks and mines can dominate Zealots and Dragoons as they try to come in, I'm going to be happy to put my uh, vote on Terran. But Snow is just unbelievably fearsome, and I feel like the matchup has changed quite a bit. And I'm going to get out of this. Um... For those of you that don't know, because I know there's a lot of new Brood War players watching us on Twitch right now, or people who are new to Brood War, that is, this is what's known as a Manor Pylon. If you build this, it actually blocks SCVs from getting to this, so then this SCV will go all the way around. Same with this. So now, like, these two back ones, you can see the workers taking the longest path possible to be able to get there. So this is pretty nasty and dirty. LMLMLMO. Laughing my laughing my laughing my off, is what I said. <laughs> and so, um, the Manor Pylon plus Zealot Pressure is, like, weirdly more common than I would have ever thought. Like, weirdly, weirdly more common. Because I have to be saying, what's the actual mineral impact of the Manor Pylon? So, not only is it generally worth it to get the Manor Pylon down if you can, this allows you to begin to move in with Zealots, which you're generally happy to have a Zealot, sometimes two in the early game. 
you're okay with that as a Protoss player. It doesn't massively disrupt what you're doing. Um, but what this can do is it can continue to make these pylons. Oh, wait, what are my buttons? Is W? There we go. Let's continue to make these pylons get even more value. And of course, if you can trap workers, like you can literally see there's a worker that's trapped on the other side of this pylon. The Zealots can leverage this and you can get even more pressure and even more scouting information. So over time, this just starts to slowly add up. So one thing that I feel like is interesting about the PVT matchup is for those of you that watched a lot of Brood War maybe before StarCraft II, then watched StarCraft II for a bit, then you're coming back here. Um, um, the biggest change is that Protosses formerly were very Arbiter focused as their late game tech against Terrans. Where, oh, I can't really break the Terran player because there's so many siege tanks and mines. I will then get Arbiters so that when the Terran player moves out, I will recall into their base. I will stasis clumps of tanks. And that is how I will eventually be able to... Sweetheart. Hey, just excuse me. Excuse me, that's my keyboard. I need my keyboard. I'm pleased to announce we're doing a mouse-only review of this game. The big change that's happened in the last few years... Amazing. Hey, hey, no, not the mouse. Get off the mouse. Get off the mouse. You're just sitting there taking it. I need you to move. Thank you. Okay. 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 All right. Okay, hold on. All right. I've regained control of the system. We're fine. Arbiters used to be the main late game technology of Protoss players because there was just no way to break through. Are you going to let me do this? Am I allowed to do my... Can I have my water at least? All right. The big change. I'm going to finally say it. Here it comes. Protoss players have started to go like double robotics facility reaver and make massive... I'm sorry. Double robotics facility shuttle and make massive amounts of drops counterattacks and continued pressure early game. They just make so many crazy weird pressure opportunities open up. And so what winds up happening is that Terran players never even get to the situation where they can do these sorts of very slight spare collections of like, oh, I'm just gonna do two factories and build tanks and defend with two factory tank on three bases, like a lot of players are needing to get like five factory on two base just to be able to take an expansion. So I'm going to, excuse me, Despi, remove this. And I mean, th th this is some of the power of going for this early zealot pressure. Finally, this manor pylon falls. Vulture is out. There's a basically, <clears throat> basically a 0% chance that the Terran player loses to this. But then suddenly, you start having dragoons coming out. The Protoss player has been just making lots and lots of workers. And look at this, 21 to 17, now 21 to 18. Both players have had the same amount of HQ buildings. And yet somehow the Protoss is ahead by four. I mean, it's like just the insane control and aggression. And oh, if maybe gets in. Okay, well, this, never mind, this is going to be equalized. Never mind, this is not going to not, not be equalized. All right, so now the Terran player is finally able to start getting some defenses up, get the bunker up, going for uh, spider mines, and is kind of broke. Like, there's not actually a good ability for this Terran player to, like, start building a Nexus or anything like that, whereas for the Terran, or for the Protoss player, they will relatively quickly be able to get a Nexus after they get this Reaver Harass up and going. This is actually pretty impressive play from... Maybe to try to just like find ways to get some scouting in. But dude, like I'm I'm honestly so impressed by Snow just like dancing around with these dragoons to get any uh a space control he can to prevent this like scouting vulture from getting in. This is what I love so much about watching Brood War in the last three or four years. There's just so much attacking. 
and like the, the 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 control moves have gotten so insane from people dude and shuttle speed wow okay so like there's a time maybe in like 2012 13 14 where if you didn't get an expansion up fast enough like people go what are you doing like every build is about taking a fast expansion every build is like Barracks, Bunker, Depot, Expand, then get a Factory for Terran. And every Protoss is like one gate, range, or skip range, and go straight for the Nexus. And, God, the ways that players are able to just find interesting attacking angles are so awesome. So, all right. Is the Reaver done? No, see, this is, this is another sort of weird thing that happens. Look at this. This is a shuttle that doesn't have any reaver in it. Because here's the reaver right here. <laughs> and I have seen, I have seen an ASL players just getting this shuttle. Turn this off. Getting this shuttle with like a dragoon in it, and then just like going here and shooting a little bit at the SCVs, and then going back and picking up the reaver later. <laughs> it's like so cool. But I mean, this is this is a crazy kind of opening to see right here. Oh, this is kind of done. Look at Snow, just target firing the spider mines. Let's see if we can get this. Huh? Just too good. And then speed should be done nearly, yeah. So nine times out of 10, I'd be like, yep. Snow has already won. Snow has whomped. But a second factory went down before the command center. Again, this is this is this kind of weird mental shift where you go, okay, I now know I need to get lots of factories and units against Protoss players because they're just gonna, they're just gonna be so stupidly aggressive. And again, building a second reaver in like 2000 and five would be considered kind of a overly bold, overly aggressive maneuver. Like, dude, you, you, you're being wasteful. You really should focus on getting, like, a third Nexus up, and there's no guarantee that this will actually be good. But, like, the Robo Facility just never stopped building these days. It's so awesome. But the Observer's in the base. I'm actually curious what Snow can see. I mean, he's just, he's just getting a chance to see everything. Excuse me, sweetheart. There you go. I'm petting you now. You still mad? All right, my cat's still mad. Oh, that's right, dude. Okay, I don't play Terran vs. Protoss. I'm a Zerg main. All I play is Zerg. This is something that I have watched many do, Snow do, all the modern top tier uh, Protosses do. That still, I'm blown away at every single time. I mean, I'm gonna say. <laughs> Okay, I'm about to say something that sounds not impressive, but they're really good at counting how many units are left. They're really good at counting how many units are left. You know what I would do? I would go, ooh, I don't actually know if I can go nearby this bunker. This is kind of scary. Or similarly, if I get the vision back for both players, ooh, there's a turret here, so this area is off limits. There's a turret here, so now this area is off limits. Man, if the Terran builds a turret here, these areas are all off limits. Modern Protosses are insane at going, okay, what's an opportunity to pick off this bunker? Or let me drop the reaver here and just pick off this turret and then uh, throw in two shuttles, pick off a turret here, and then just force openings into areas. Cause I don't know, I, like like there's something about older school gameplay in StarCraft One that feels very much like the stories of of the, the, the British with their muskets forming a line and and doing like lines of firing because that was an honorable way to fight, right? Like that's how you play a lot of old uh, uh, StarCraft One. You just be like, okay, well, no, I just, I'm not allowed to go here. Cause look, this guy built a turret. All right, pack it in everybody, we're macroing. But like this, just literally floating into the front, picking this off because there's a clear count of how many uh, Marines were killed. I mean, the Marines are a little bit more binary. Oh, you brought your Marines and I killed them all. Okay, so I know that there's not going to be any of that to worry about. 
but just the forcing of this is so good. So good! <laughs> uh, D's... D's... N it's so hard for me not to say it, but I don't want to get demonetized by YouTube. You know, you know. <laughs> Maybe had a question and by snow the answer was D's. All right, continued expanding. Uh, three gateways is generally generally considered not that many by PVT standards. Normally, you would be wanting to sprint towards something like one, and then three or four, and then eight, you know. Oh my god. Oh my god. This Reaver is so annoying. D's what, Day 9? D's are some of the best control tricks I've ever seen. Oh my god. Okay, so this had a Reaver in it, and you saw him moving back and forth. He was waiting for the tanks to fire, because tanks have a pretty long cooldown. And if they all fire, then he'll unload the Reaver. If, he, if one of them fires, he doesn't unload the Reaver, because if he does, the remaining two will just shoot and blow it up. Hey, look, more shuttles. Here's the mod. Here's the modern gamer. With a fancy hat and thick lapels, the modern gamer continues to build shuttles from the robotics facility. More shuttles coming in. Shuttle three, a G and a G. So, I mean, like the the, the last few years of PVT has been like nonstop knife fights. Moving here just just to shoot at turrets. And now, surely, surely, after getting these. Ah! After getting these Goliaths, we would have to agree that surely the shuttles need to stop their aggression. Nope, not a chance. Picking up, dropping. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Oh my god, it's just so cool. And now, here is. A, there, there's a couple things I want to point out. One of the reasons why I love watching Brood War so much um, is. These micro engagements don't take place over four or five seconds. They take place over like 30 to 30 seconds to like two minutes, like a really big range. And also, a player's ability to do this kind of control is opening up the Protoss' ability to do this specific build order. And I think that interplay of control is, um, I just think it's magical. The interplay of control and strategy. Look at that, and he gets out. Still making shuttles, queuing him up. And frankly, it, it creates this, uh, let's see, Alt W, and then this. There we go. Sorry, I didn't realize I'd turn that off. It just makes it so dynamic. Punishment says that the Protoss player is putting so much pressure he doesn't even have to build any base defense. Well, one of the big things, and this is where the counting of units come in, although this is a little bit more common. Oh my god. Okay, I gotta answer your question that I gotta be impressed. We're not seeing any vultures because we we see that the, the factories without add-ons have been making Goliaths thus far, and because we're continuing to apply pressure and continuing to kill Goliaths, that means that you, the Terran player, you have to make more Goliaths. So I know increasingly that there is no more Vulture pressure coming on. It's not just pressure equals you can't attack me. It's the Vultures are the very specific threat and I, I am able to concretely count when you are making Vultures and when you are not. And then again, hey, th this is like where you would just tacitly say, okay, well, you know, you the, you, the Terran player, you, you have your tank siege, you have your turrets. I, I can't actually come in, but like, nope, just literally bombing in the front, picking off more turrets. Every turret that's down means more aggression. I mean, watching some of Bisu's games in ASL has just been marvelous like this. Sort of says, of StarCraft, you prefer one or two? Uh, I mean, one, I have way too much bias and time spent playing and watching that game. Here's a second robotics facility that I was talking about being common. Also, some of these uh, pylons are here to make full walls against potential vulture harass as well. I'm super stupidly impressed at the, this Terran player's ability to stabilize in this. 
and still getting a plus one attack, like not forgetting things. Here's the five factories for defensive play I was talking about beforehand. And I didn't even see this game in advance. It's almost like I've played this game before. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so thirsty. It's dehydrating being right all the time. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, um, the difficulty of controlling StarCraft 1 is such an extraordinary cliff for many people. Um, that I, I, I fully appreciate someone going, dude, if I box my units in StarCraft 2 and tell them to go somewhere, they do. And that's how I want to play a game. That's very reasonable. So, the fact that Weka Mady uh, actually has these four Goliaths, again, intuitively you go, ah, you got me. But, like, if you can control like this, and look, controlling and not targeting the Goliaths first, but instead targeting the tanks to make sure the Zealots can continue to be aggressive, and now all these are dead again, and suddenly Goliaths start to have to get to produced again, and now supply depots are falling... Somehow a Dragoon at the front is doing some damage. I mean, isn't this just, like, so insane? So, yeah, like, th there's these sort of um, older ideas that you would have in Terran vs. Protoss of minimizing factories, maximizing command centers, very Flash. You know, circa his early days. Circa mid-2000s. Where, like, dude, yeah, no, of course, yeah, you get a whole bunch of whole bunch of stuff and then once you get a whole bunch of bases then you can macro up with your like you know really high upgrades and stuff but yeah not anymore and there was a question and what says do you think going wraiths uh, versus this is the play or not possible so um th there's so i, I want to delineate between having a wraith versus making a wraith um so, so to make a wraith, to get a wraith, you would need to build the starport. And then you would need to make that wraith. And then what would you do with that starport that's there? That's one of the reasons why just getting a wraith is quite tricky here. Because you're already under a lot of pressure. So getting one cycle of goliaths out of the factories and then having the factories go back to producing vultures and tanks is a much more efficient use of the building. And as you can see... Efficiency really matters when you're under this much pressure. Um, but the second statement is, what about if we had a Wraith? Players who will... Th there are players who will do builds where they might rush for a dropship to harass. Then they cut the engineering bay and they get a Wraith so that they can repel these early um, shuttles. And that is acceptable because you're being... The efficiency gain is that you don't actually have to make the uh, engineering bay and turrets, and you're doing a, a, a proactive drop play. But if you are doing that, there's only a temporary window of time where you can actually be effective with wraiths, because players have started to just have the shuttle have some dragoons in there. Dragoons deal a full 20 damage to wraiths. Uh, wraith. See? I told you. They do a full 20 damage to wraiths. And, uh... People would call wraiths paper planes because they just seem to take full damage from everything and blow up. Uh, so I think that I don't think that there's time for the Terran player to get a wraith at all. And I think having one would only be temporary. So that's sort of my my complete answer of all, all the sort of considerations. I mean, look at this. Normally, as a Protoss player, you would never dream of trying to break the, the front with slow zealots. You would never dream of this. And, I mean, this was repelled by the Terran player, effectively. It was. But Snow is just continuing to park his booty outside the front and make sure that this siege tank count stays low. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. Also, this macro is slipping really bad. Whoopsie daisies. But hey, fourth base coming up. 
And on one hand, you would say to yourself, dude, this is, this is an ineffective attack. You didn't break the front. But really, your goal is not to break the front. Your goal is to keep the tank count low. Tanks can't move. Tanks need to be fixed in order to get siege in place. And let's see how long it takes for this command center to actually land and begin mining. 14 and a half minutes is when this popped down. Here comes yet more drop pressure. Look at this, just continuing to pick off the turrets. Not going for the suicide to the uh, workers type play here. Still been 30 seconds, and this command center hasn't landed. All these units that could have been out here. That first round of things was picked off. I'm actually curious when Zealot Legs is going to get constructed here. Still slow Zealot. <laughs> Jin Jin's doing some translations in here. For those of you who don't know, Jin Jin uh, is a uh, community member that does amazing translations from Korean pro gamers' uh, streams and comments and tournaments and comments and games. Um, and, and do Jin Jin, your video of pros reacting to C is like my favorite video of the last month. I've linked it to everyone that I know. Uh, but Jin Jin is in the chat right now and uh, said that... <laughs> Darren Blair said, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> just like the amount of aggression is just so much. But I do think the one saving grace is that, I mean, adding up to 10 gateways, but not getting Zealot Legs yet, it does feel like Zealot Leg Speed is probably necessary right now. I mean, unless you just want to go only Dragoon. See, remember when I said 1430 is when this lifted? Let's see when it lands. Still, still going to be more time. Still going to be more time. Dude, and these Reavers just continue to pick off. See, uh, this is why every... I mean, if you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, just bring up the tank count. Ah, oh, yeah, he's keeping the tank count low. This is why. If you can keep the tank count sufficiently down... Terran cannot take new positions. It does not matter if the, you know, Protoss army is weaker or any of that sort of stuff, as long as the tank count is kept low. It's very difficult for the, uh... God, that's so busted. It's very difficult for the Terran player to take positions. I do not know how Snow keeps this alive. Like, look at this. 1430, this was done. And yes, it's landed. And now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Two and a half minutes, bam, there it is. I mean, this is five factories. The main is like, mined out. <laughs> Protoss has this fourth base, but still hasn't transferred things over. Where is the Zealot leg speed? Is this, is this some sort of meme? Is this a meme? All right. Why is he not built a citadel? Is this is this a challenge? Is this is this the win without zealot speed challenge? Is that is that what this guy is doing? I don't believe it. He just shuttles them around, no legs needed. That's true. That's true. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to skip leg day, honey. Because eventually I'm going to have my consciousness transported into a Roomba. It's going to be okay. All right, well, oh my god. Oh! 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 There it is! Never skip leg day! Let's go! Oh my god. I thought it was called Charge. What what what's the name of Zell Legs in this game? I've called it Zell Legs for so many years. It's not like muscular augments or something like that. What what, what is it called? What is Zell? Holy cow! 
yeah, no, Char Charge is the name of the uh, StarCraft II upgrade. Zealot, Legs, Brood, War, Liquipedia. I can't believe... It's called Leg Enhancements. I have never known that. I, that's not like, oh, I remember now. Leg Enhancements? <laughs> Someone... They, they, a writer absolutely was checked out at the end of a long day of naming things. Like, oh my god. I mean, you, you have the most evocative names for things, you know, like... <laughs> you, you have things like adrenal glands, chitinous plating, and then, and then zealot leg speed is called leg enhancements. Like, get out of here. There is no way. It needs to have been something better than that. I feel like they patched it. Leg enhancements. Why are you doing squats? Oh, for leg enhancements. Oh my god, the slow zealot. Now this this is clowny. Even I know this is a bad idea. Moving the dragoons in like this. Yeah, this is this is this is this was super throwy. And also having this not built for that long is also mega giga throwy. Is this gonna start anything? Look! Look, it's leg it's no way. Develop leg enhancements. It's called Develop Leg Enhancements? It should just be changed to squats. <laughs> Sindara says, Bipedal Acceleration. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm very impressed that Weka Maidi has managed to withstand all of this. But, I mean, assuming that our Protoss developed leg enhancements at a reasonable rate... Yeah, ocular implants for ghost. That's that's like a cool name for that. It's not eye improvements. <laughs> like, gamete meiosis. No, it's just it's energy gaining. Like, I, I don't get it. Like slow zealots versus fast vultures. Guess who wins? So generally speaking. Generally, ignoring all this meme nonsense that I'm talking about, you can see that once the Terran player is positioned on this high ground, it is a really difficult press in for the Protoss player. Um, units on low ground have a 50% miss rate against units on high ground. Shout out to mid laners in Dota 2. So, if a Terran player wants to begin to apply pressure, they will often look for angles where they can work towards these high ground areas. So there's only Dragoons here. So I guess he's going to try to go for a surround. Well, this is a little weird. I thought he was going to try to move this way and then cut in. But either way, dude, Snow is still doing shit with Reavers, man. This is insane. I mean, regardless, you can see that once the Terran player gets up and going, the ability to siege here, there's really not that much that the Protoss player can do about it. You just push straight in. Now, ideally, the, the Terran player would be able to push up here and threaten these bases, but, like, cutting in and basically containing here and then moving slowly up towards these is the sort of archetypical way to break in. All right, I, I genuinely think not having legs enhancements for this deep into the game is, is like, the issue. Templar upgrades weather enhancement. Love it, even you. <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> Zealot legs. I gotta call it so long. So this this is the. So here here is where I feel like my older analysis is just incorrect. Now. My older analysis would be something like, "Wow, this is really rough." Or the Protoss player, because once the Terran player contains here, all of these gateways are going to be unable to get a good angle, and then the the Proto or excuse me, the Terran can then peel a few tanks over and pick this off, and a few tanks over and pick this off. But because of this move that modern Protosses are doing, where they are going double Robo Shuttle, suddenly it's harder to do these peel offs. 
Dusty Dee says, is Sky Toss the right move here? So in, in a generalized sense, whenever you have a map that has lots of high and low ground and high and low ground and these sort of like thin, narrow alleyways where units move, carriers just become a better unit. Because if Goliaths are here, the carriers can retreat onto this side and kind of like position back through this weird, awkward terrain. Uh, but in this very moment, there's just not nearly enough time. And carriers are a huge investment. Typically, you'll go two Stargates, make two carriers at the same time, and then that's 700 minerals down the drain. It's going to take 160 seconds to build. And then when that's done, then you have to start the interceptors. Then once all that's up, then you can engage. So, I mean, the amount of time that you have right now as snow is, is pretty minimal. Reaver's this late into the game formerly would have been considered the worst thing in the universe. But in our Lord, the year of uh, 2024, our Reaver Lord's year, I suppose. This is the edge shit. It's a lot of Dragoons getting killed, though. And I mean, th this is kind of a, a pathetic attacking from Snow, if I'm being entirely honest. I mean, it may just be retreat with the uh, probes time. Because one thing that's interesting to notice is that the Terran players mined out in their main base, and their their natural is also getting close to broke. So the Protoss does have a lot of bases that are super vulnerable. And the statement is, can a couple shuttles doing some funny business be enough to stabilize here? And I mean, normally I would be like, no, obviously. Dude, look, every time the siege tanks fire, snow perfectly loads the shuttle, or excuse me, drops the reaver on the ground, shoots, and then loads up. You can't actually get the siege, siege tank to stop firing. It'll fire, unload, shoot, lift. It'll fire, unload, shoot, lift. I can't believe he's gonna hold that. I mean, this actually looks so unfair. I'm, I mean, I would, I'm, I'm, I'm furious. Has a few sets of units here, is there a command center that's being moved? I mean, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you have to make a lot of photon cannons here if you want to be able to hold this, but this contain is, is brutal. This is the most insane game. I'm so happy. Oh my God. No, look out. Oh my God, he's building, he's building gateways here. What? All right, let's see how, how, how good is the Reaver. I mean, you would never see a Reaver this late in the game at this point. You would never. You wouldn't even dream of building Reavers this late in the game. This is an ASL match. This is all just the public ladder matches. You can get these games cwal.gg. And actually, let me let me show this real fast. This is one of the best resources of any game ever. Here's cwal.gg. This has all the top players. We showed a game from Speed earlier. You can just click it. Here's all the games. This is the download link for all of them. Here's all the aliases of the same person. This is this is an absolutely insane. Uh, you know, you can look up if I wanted to see the Zerg versus Zergs from the best players that are longer than 60 minutes. It'll give me a record of all of them. Okay, so there's only one, but let's do the 20-minute Zerg Reserves of the high-level players. Boom, there they all are. And so this is this is where I got my replays. It's incredible. All right, let's keep going. Is this side brewer only correct? My goodness, I am so impressed at both players this game. Like, Terran, Terran should have died so many times this game. In fact, I think I saw them die on my screen. Oh my god, this is so tense. Like, like the perfect targeting on these tanks in the back. And like, these, these Reavers are just so insane. This is the best Reaver control I've ever seen. I've never wound up in a situation where I would even have to watch this stuff. The four Dragoon counterattack? I mean, again, this is where you'd normally be like, all right, yeah, this player's dead as shit. The game's over, GG. Look at all the probes getting picked off. Small set of units moving this way. This might actually 
be something significant. No. Who does a Dragoon counterattack and does anything with it? This is the goofiest thing I've ever seen. How is this possible? And a DT? All right, now we're gaming. Now we're pod racing, man. <laughs> okay. See, this contain is huge here. This means all the Protoss stuff is stuck there. Oh my god. I'm not even analyzing. I'm just I'm just a fanboy, man. Screw analysis. Analysis is for jobbers. Analysis is for theory crafters. I'm a gamer, man. <laughs> oh, the DT is getting produced. Well, this is actually interesting because Snow has so much Vespin gas that this might actually be an approach here. Just keep making a stupidly large amount. Oh, I don't think... Oh, no. The train just got missed. It just got missed. Oh, I mean... If you ever start to feel like you're winning, the first instinct is like, okay, how do I go check other locations? Oh no, the devastation. Okay. So we have some scans. Now we have a larger meteor group of things. You don't really need to retake that. I mean, I suppose you could go back and take the other main. That's what I would do, but I'm a coward. Holy guacamole. Oh my god. This this is saving it. This is saving it right here, man. Is there literally just not enough comsats? Like, Terran should have died 50 million times uh, earlier in this game, but like controlled so well. This is just This is wild and wacky insanity here. Oh! There's not that many units here. Okay, so. Two, there's no scanner. There's 12, there's no scanner. Okay. All right, so. This position right now for snow is really precarious. Normally you would want the Protoss to be up 20, 30, 40 supply if the average supply is this high. But the fact of the matter is when you have, he lifted both of them. When you have this many shuttles, or, the reason why you want to have that large of an edge against um, a Terran is that the Terran typically is the one who is able to choose the efficient units. They're able to choose, you know, siege tanks and uh, vultures, and they choose when the big push happens, which can often determine when the big fight happens. And with, the, with shuttles, you as the Protoss suddenly get a lot more optionality to force attacks in really weird spots. Protoss already had some good ways to force attacks, but this is the really, really, really wacky and wild uh, high variance stuff that you get out of the double shuttle play. Oh my god, and there's going to be Archons coming in this way? Are you kidding me? Archons? Now, Archons don't set off spider mines. Archons are terrible against Terran because Vultures literally detonate them in like seconds, it's so bad. What? All right, straight goofing. Okay, so so Protoss, I think Protoss has actually spotted this top right. There was an observer going up there. All right, let's see. I need to stop moving around so much. Ah! Uh, so, I mean, this, this Terran player should be like out of scans. I don't know why we're trying to take this one when we have this top left main that's available, but Maybe it's just to preserve everything being really, really close together. I mean, this this does feel like Snow has lost again. I mean, that looks pretty grim, not gonna lie. Oh my god, he's gonna get this top base. He's also gonna lose all of his shuttles. He's picking up, oh my god, there's no income. The Terran is broke. What? Wait, what? Oh my god. Okay, so that's... Alright, Weka maybe just has... Has nothing. Alright, so, so it's all here. Oh my god, this is the weirdest Protoss vs. Terran I've ever seen. 
And there's no scans. There's one scan. Get out of there, guys! I mean, this this is basically the game, right? More photon cannons going down? Are you... I mean, are we literally serious here? Okay. We're not. We're not serious at all. Okay. Okay. So Snow has 15 probes. They're basically all here. I don't know if you can afford probes when you're just trying to micro reavers and you're building scarabs like crazy. This Dark Templar is going to kill everything. There's no scans. There's two scans. I gotta stop making comments. What is this match? <laughs> oh my god. No, just Keep hitting that K button. K to make Dark Templar. Oh my god. Snow is pulling this back? You're kidding me. Oh my god, Brood War is so awesome. How many more scans do we have? Two. Two. Okay, two. Maybe a little bit more. Shoot the... God, shoot the fucking... No! no oh god! Okay. So there's more DTs coming in. Okay. All right, so, so this is where you're in a low econ spot and there's the, where are my units? And you have to start unseaging these small bits that have been peppered to control small bits of space around. Let's move everything back. Maybe we're gonna go down here. Nope, there's units here. Dude, snow is so good. All right, so, I mean, you need, you need the photon cannon, otherwise you're gonna get bunch of vultures in your main base. Oh my god, look, more shuttles getting made. This is insane. Oh my god. Yeah, I should just read Jin Jin's translations and chat aloud and act like I can read Korean. Dusty D says, would you say there's more comeback potential in SC1 versus SC2? Yes. Unbelievably 100,000 million billion percent. Oh, no! The Reaver has, like, no health. He's just... It's pure micro. Get fucking... Oh! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh! Get... Oh, no, he lost it. Come on, little slug. Go! Shoot it. No. Oh. Okay. High Templar, Dark Templar, High Templar. The squad has been assembled. Oh, my God, you absolute turkey. Literally, literally make probes, please. Oh, dude, did you see this? The Terran player unseages his tank when he scans and sees that there's a DT. Because he wants to make sure that he doesn't do splash damage to his own siege tank. Oh my god. So this is... Literally, please make more workers. Please, pretty please, with sugar on top. Oh my god, please. Oh, he has a high Templar. Storm, storm. God, fucking storm is shit. Oh my god, he got a lot of SCVs, but I don't think that matters that much because you're not making probes at your base. What is this, what is this probe doing? It's just long range mining. Yes, please make more probes. Please, for the love of God. All right, well. Oh, good God. We're going to get more Reavers? All right, let's see what is going on over here. Please just, like, take it out of the base. Like, do something economic. This is the most insane game that I could have possibly opened up. All right. This is... What level of play is this? The highest. This is, like, the highest. These players are so good. I can't even stress to you how good these players are. Okay. Like, I am not an analyst anymore. I'm just, I am just a fan who loves this game. That's it. Okay, finally take another base. All right, so, so let's see here. Let's see here. Where, where does the shuttle go from here on out? I mean, yeah, I mean, picking those off. Oh, God, fuck. So if the siege tank shoots and you load up the reaver as the shot goes off, the, the siege tank doesn't deal damage. Because when the target begins the explosion, 
There's a frame where the explosion has begun, but it hasn't dealt damage. And so during that frame, you can actually lift. The same applies to Reavers and a lot of the other explosive effects in the game. Okay. Are you making probes again? Oh, thank God he's making probes. Okay. So if you sit at this join, there's a lot of pressure right now where the Terran player wants to obviously move things through this join to this base. But anytime you do, it runs risk of being able to get picked off by the Reaver. So you can start chipping away at reinforcements. And this allows you to add more flying uh, or more shuttles from the left side. Oh, God. Oh, I'm so stressed. Oh, my God. Supernova Maniac. It's great to see a fellow 2DX player hanging out. Man, we got all the oldies and the goodies hanging in here. Sorry, I didn't mean to call you an oldie. Uh, but you know what we are. We're ancient fucks. Oh, my God. We have another base from Snow. This is insane to me. Okay. Is there yet another base coming? No, this is good. Wrong game we brew all right now. <laughs> Fucking Konami, am I right? Charging me $800 for a song. All right. All right, are we getting more? Oh my God, we're about to do an Archon drop? Like, I don't even know what I'm watching. Look, look at the boldness. Look at this Reaver pushing all the way into the main base. Because again, it's just trying to control this space where all the reinforcements have to go through. No way. I don't believe it. I, I literally refuse to believe. Well, okay, I guess I guess so does Villain here. What's in it? Archon. Archon? Even the Archon is surprised that he's here. He's like, I don't I wasn't supposed to be made. Oh my god, this is so much, so much control. Okay, I guess if we snipe all the command centers. <laughs> Uh oh, oh no. Oh, Wikimedi finds the angle. Just a simple pair of vultures. Look out! Oh. oh, and the scan is the plan, man. Why are we pushing to the main base? This is it. This is this is the base. I mean, this is so this is the most insane thing ever. I guess we're in the main base now. It's unclear to me why. This seems like the, the real point of danger. But I suppose, I suppose, if you're able to just pick off units as they pop up out of here, this is giving you plenty of time to build up more units here, and then you can clamp both sides and get a guaranteed pick off here. But these vultures are doing so much damage, dude. Six kills, four kills. Uh-oh. So here is the containment to make sure this never gets boosted. But, I mean, more vultures moving in is just danger. Oh, my God. I'm so worried. I'm so stressed out. Get the fuck out of there, man! Jesus, Snow is stressing me out so much. Oh, my God. I mean, there's no analysis to be done. This is just awesome. I love this game. Oh, it's in the red. No, 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 it's going to get sniped. Okay, so this means that this is this is it. This is it. Like, the, these Archons are it. But now the Vultures just move down, kite the Archon, and pick it off trivially. Or, or, someone a what? How did that Archon kill that Goliath? What that was, oh my god, that was crazy. And in here is two Zealots and a High Templar. Oh my god, a completely failed Storm Drop. Absolutely wreckeroni. All right, so it's 22 to 14 workers. Snow really needs to make some probes. Need to hit that P button. I don't know what these are doing over here, but here they are. No, 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 no. Please. No, 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 please, please, please don't. Don't move that far forward. Be very careful. Be very, very careful. Didn't realize they attacked that fast. Yeah, it's like hit, 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 hit. They're like super fast attack rate units. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, it's so good. Oh my god, the macro is slipping. We have another drop coming in of something, for some reason, somehow. No, there's no way a Reaver walked its way there. 
That would be as unlikely as me walking my way there. Like, I can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> this is so goofy. Okay, so, 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 so. So, we are... We're just we're kind of carefully holding on. Get... Run! Okay. So, still 24 probes to 17, because for some reason, Snow is, like, really delayed on building this. Oh, my God. The DTs are just incredible, because there's just not that many landed command centers. There's there's this one. And I think this has a scan. Yes, yeah, so there's just a small number of scans. Oh, you... get Come here. I need, I need you to sit down. I need you to sit down and calm down. Okay, so... I'm also keeping a keen eye down on this base as well. I mean, if if there just starts being a couple Dragoons made, some sweeps here, this gets taken. And then this probably doesn't get retaken, but this north one is a big target base for the Protoss. Oh, that was just some very nice pressure from the uh, Terran player. Snow. Snow. Oh, God. Okay. You think everything's fine and dandy. This is good, splitting these up. Dude, Weekend 80 is just being tortured. Tortured slowly. Kind of rooting for Weekend 80 now. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. So that gets killed. There's now two scans left. No scans left. Dude, I just want Snow to keep making workers. I just want you to keep doing that. Oh my god. Because, like... Dude, this is so annoying. Just picking off tank after tank after tank after tank. Still has... Should have two scans left. Alright, dude. Breezy Tuda, I have an answer to that question, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of losing my mind. No way! And a single DT is here. Get him, Reaver! Oh, and he kills the two units that are good at killing DTs. He's going to target fire. The turret. Is he going to try to repair the turret? No. Doesn't have time. I mean, this is unbelievable. More DTs coming in. I mean, Snow is starting to run low on gas because he doesn't put any things in there because they're just microing like crazy. This is the lowest econ game I've seen in ages. Still making reavers and shuttles. Starting to make... Oh my god. Starting to make Flood of Zealots out of this base? Oh. Oh. Has sh has Snow broken the contain? Has Snow broken the contain? I I genuinely don't believe it. It's 77 to 41 supply. Oh my god. See, he waits for the fire... Or waits for the shot from the tank on the DT, then unloads. And you can just see this. You hear the kung of the siege tank firing. And then you immediately unload the reaver and shoot. I mean, it's crazy how Snow is able to do this consistently. I mean, if Snow does the rare technique of building a nexus, like, just build one. Come on. Yeah, no, this, this, this is it. Snow's won. This is, the instant these zealots move down here, and this nexus starts, that's it. That's the game. Oh my god, he literally microed his way in. He, does he have the scarab damage upgrade? How is he able to do so much damage? Look at this. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. He does. He got the hundred. Got the damage upgrade on the Scarab. What's he doing in the main base? He's just killing turrets in here. Snow's the greatest player of all time. Holy shit! I don't believe it. What would that feel like to be Terran in this? Just killing every turret. What? So we can just float. Oh, that's really bad. 
Oh. I mean, this is the worst job of expanding I think I've ever seen out of snow, but still. I mean, Archon DT, this must be so annoying. He's going everywhere, and he's killing off the Scanner Sweepers. So there's just this one Scanner Sweep. And then he's going to build only Dark Templar, and one by one, run the DTs in, and destroy everything. I, that's so mean. What would that feel like? What would that feel like? This is hilarious. I mean, this is hilarious. Oops. I mean, I can't believe this is the most impressive set of control I've ever seen. Oh my god! And he even gets the mind pull onto them. Alright, well. Alright, this is the game. One zealot goes in. I don't know I don't know what this is, but it's probably something about the brutality of the of the match. I mean it, it's basically over. So, so, he's apparently saying please stop. <laughs> please stop. That's so funny. Oh my Crazy Chris says, I forgot the Brood War DTs did enough damage to reliably annihilate buildings. Yeah, dude. Yeah, the 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 DTs in this game and Zerglings in this game are blasted. Yeah, I mean, this this is gonna slowly not work, sort of comically, against what uh we're seeing from the Protoss. Like just literally not making tanks is very effective here. Like Vulture Goliath is going to be very effective, but there's no reason that Snow should be continuing to make exactly this. Oh my god, the mine pull in there. Oh, dude, give me a break. Can't be serious. Snow is the greatest player I've ever seen. This is the greatest. This is unbelievable. I actually can't believe... I mean, like, like the, the micro of the last 15 minutes has been impressive, but, like... It was a bit of an even situation. Oh, and Snow says GG and leaves. <laughs> Can you imagine getting whomped by someone's micro for 48 minutes and they go, you know what, I have the win. Now that's based. I love that, man. And let me tell you something. If I were the Terran player, I would, I would be pissed that they didn't honorably let me say GG and leave. I mean, because you know what's gonna happen? Your friends are gonna log in and go, oh dude, I saw you won a 48 minute game against Snow. What happened? And you gotta go, well, he beat me, but then he left. It was actually, it was awful. <laughs> oh my God, at least let me wear the loss. I held on against Snow for 48 minutes. Oh, did you win? Well, no, I know it says a win, but I lost. What, you lost? How did that happen? I don't want to talk about it. No, I'm going to make you talk about it. That's fucking awesome, man. Snow is an absolute ice cold killer, man. Do you see that? God. Woo. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, my God. That's the greatest stuff I've ever seen.